Hey everybody, it's Peter, and we are here at Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals, Jim Gilbert's Power Sports, and we are going to take an in-depth look at the Pedego Boomerang e-bike. I love e-bikes, but before I get into it too much, let me just thank Jim Gilbert's for letting me have access to their entire product line, and if you love e-bikes and want to know more about the Pedego line of bikes, subscribe to my channel because we're going to review every single one we can. And if you're going to buy an e-bike, why not swing by Jim Gilbert's? They have a great service department that takes care of everything you need to know about this bike. Sales team knows their product, and they care about you. They're Canada's Huggable de Car Dealer. All right, let's dig into the Pedego e-bike. Now, first thing you should know is I'm a huge fan of e-bikes, so there's going to be a bit of bias towards an e-bike, even over a regular bike. It used to be e-bikes were kind of viewed as, oh, if you've got bad knees, which I don't have the best knees, or if you're older or whatever. The reality is e-bikes are for everyone. They are exploding in popularity because they're fun. They take some of the work out of bike riding, so it's all about enjoyment without having to do the work. And if you want to get a workout out of it, no problem. You can dial back the power. So basically, what is an e-bike? Well, it's an electric motor with a battery, and it also is a bicycle. So think of it kind of like the Prius of bicycles. It has some electric assist to help you when you pedal. Now, there's different classes and different styles. We're going to talk about this one specifically, and a couple things you may want to look for in an e-bike. This one has a number of gears. I think it's eight or nine or ten at least eight gears. I believe it's got eight gears. I should have looked that up. I'm sorry. It also has a throttle, which means you can drive this sort of like a motorcycle. We're going to get into why that's important. And that might be something that you're looking for. In Canada, the motor is rated at 500 watts. Now, you don't really need to know a whole lot about watts and other stuff, but you will notice if you're researching this in the United States, it may have up to 750 watts. Now, you say, hey, why are we getting gypped in Canada? First of all, we're not. We're getting what we need in Canada, but this meets a legal e-bike standard. And that's important because a lot of cities across the country, if you're driving, in the lot, driving these on bike trails or on the road, they have to meet the legal standards. And there's a whole bunch of little things, but the key thing is no bigger than a 500 watt motor and no uh, faster than 32 kilometers an hour of assisted power. It will still go faster unassisted, so if you're going down a hill and you wanna go 40 kilometers an hour, no problem. 32 kilometers an hour is a very good speed for most people who are biking, and it makes it easy. So, let's dig into the specifics of this Pedego Boomerang and show you why it may be a, the right bike for you, and if it's not, and you're interested in a different style bike, like I said, we're gonna review every style of bike they have, and they have a whole lot of styles. This is one that I kinda like the look of for the video, but if you want mountain bikes, fat tire bikes, if you want fold-up bikes, if you want trikes, if you want cargo bikes, Pedego's got them. We're going to review them. Hopefully, they'll let me review a tandem bike, although I didn't see one yet. So lots of stuff coming up on this channel. All right, let's dig into this one now. All right, the first thing I want to show you is the controller. This is the other key component on every single e-bike. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to turn the power on by just tapping it there. Now, if it doesn't come on right away, it's showing you 26 inch wheels, what it's set up for. If it doesn't come right up right away, there is a power switch on the battery, which is sort of a full shutdown. Uh, what you have here is a very simplistic but detailed display. Um, you've got the battery percentage is at 92%. You've got, this one's got 2.4 kilometers on the trip odometer. There's your speed, or sorry, your pedal assist uh, number. Now, pedal assist is the amount of assistance that this bike has. We're going to talk about that in detail in a second. And there's kilometers an hour because we're Canadian. If you're American, you can set it to miles per hour. In fact, that's how it was set up when I first came to it today. Over here are your gears. It still has gears, so you can pedal it unassisted, so you can pedal it with some assistance and use your gears, use your muscle. But you're going to find, most of the time, you're going to keep it in a higher gear because you have the ability to have that electric assist. So. The other thing you should know about is there are two batteries available on this, about a 10 or 10 and a half amp hour battery and a 17 and a half amp hour battery. They're gonna cost a little bit more if you get the higher capacity battery. Batteries, of course, are just like electric cars, same sort of chemistry involved there. And if you get the larger battery, you're gonna get more range. If you're a heavier person, you may want the larger battery to give you some extra range as well. We're talking in and around 90, 100 kilometers of range. It can vary based on a whole bunch of conditions. So the way you're gonna work this, first of all, if you just tap the power button, you're not gonna see it there, but you do see this little icon come up there. Your headlights are on. So we'll show you your headlights a little bit later, headlight and taillight. You can tap that. So you can turn them on or off from the uh, controller. Some bikes, uh, I'm thinking of a Trek bike right now, uh, they don't have the ability to turn off that headlight, which just screams, hey, I'm an e-bike, and it's just, you know, you don't always want to do that when you're on a walking trail or something like that. So you have that ability. Uh, we're not going to go through all the settings here, but this is your key setting. To adjust the power setting, you're just going to bring it up like that, number one, 
number two, number three, number four, number five, which is kind of the end, but there's a number six here as well. We're gonna talk about that in just a second. That's how you adjust the controls. It's super simple. If you can ride a bike, you can ride an e-bike. If you want a little bit more power, you can do this, or you can switch gears. All of the power controls are kind of right there. Now, let's talk about the other handlebar really quickly. This is the right side handlebar. Again, it looks like a grip shifter kind of shifter on the right side here. So what you actually have is a throttle. If I spin this, the bike will move. Uh, you can tell it will move because it's green. Now, I want to show you if you show in a different pedal assist, if I turn the pedal assist off to pedal assist zero, the light goes red. It's actually much more red in, um, in person than the camera's capturing it there. So it's very clear red, very clear um, green. And if you go to that pedal assist six, which we'll go up to here, you will see it turns blue. Pedal assist six doesn't actually give you pedal assist, but still leaves your throttle active when you need it. Now let's talk about why you'd want to use the throttle. So when you're riding an e-bike, generally speaking, you're going to keep the power level in level one, level two, maybe level three. You're not going to have it up to max power all the time, basically because you're going to receive assistance up to about 32 kilometers an hour. At that point, it's going to be harder to go faster because then it's all you. So you don't need max power to go max speed all the time. You can use lower power even to go max speed. When you hit hills, when you hit wind, that kind of thing, that's when you're going to want to toggle up the power on your left thumb. Now, the throttle is really, really handy because sometimes you get to a little dip where you just need a little extra power and then you come back to level again. If you get to that dip, you can give it a little bit of throttle and that will allow you to get up there without having to switch gears or switch your power level. It makes it easier to ride an e-bike than a regular bike. Normally, when you get to a little bit of a hill, even it's just a 15-foot little hill, you have to, on a regular bike, gear down in advance, so you've got the gear shifted before you get there. Or on a regular e-bike without a throttle, you've got to get your power ready in advance. This way you can go up the hill and go, you know what, I just need a little bit more assistance. And rather than looking down and seeing what power level you're in to adjust it to a couple power levels, you give a little bit of throttle, and you, give, and you can back off the throttle, and it just gives you that little bit of assistance. While you're in a pedaling mode with electric assist, you can max out the power by giving it full throttle here on the, uh, on the throttle and that makes it handy. So having an e-bike with a throttle really matters. Now, we've talked about the power system. Let's talk about brakes for a second. Brakes are one of the most important things on e-bikes and they're often overlooked. And you can see here, it says mineral oil. These are hydraulic disc brakes. Think of brakes kind of like your vehicle, your car. They have hydraulic oil, not just cables that stretch, which means they're very precise, they're very strong, and when you have a bike that can really power you quite powerfully, move you along quite well, you want good quality brakes, and the Pedego e-bikes have that. The mineral oil symbol here shows you that they are uh, made to handle their hydraulic brakes, and they're say, basically high-end mountain bike brakes. They give you a better feel at the lever, and they also give you um, just more control. Let's take a look what's on the wheel now. On the wheel, you're getting a ventilated disc brake, which sounds like a performance car, sounds like a good high-end mountain bike, and that's exactly what it is. It is a disc brake, so you have that disc there that's squeezed by this piece here. Again, hydraulically controlled. You can adjust this fairly easily, but again, here at Jim Gilberts, you can let them do your work for you. The benefit of this is a lot. Uh, first of all, they're stronger brakes, they're better brakes. If they grab your wheel here, or if they grab your um, the rim here, uh, that, if it gets dirty, muddy, there's all kinds of issues with noise and other things. So now this can go through large puddles and um, you can keep sort of the dirt and grime off there. These are stronger, better. There's a reason we don't use sort of rim grabbing brakes on vehicles. We use, um, on cars anyways, we use uh, disc brakes and it's the same automotive style brake here. You can see a little bit of pedals to it. You'll notice if you see our Kawasaki line of uh, vehicles that many of them have the pedals to help dissipate heat and uh, that just makes for a really good uh, braking system. Now one thing to keep in mind is a lot of e-bikes will have disc brakes but they won't be quality disc brakes. These ones aren't squeaky ones, they work well. Uh, sometimes disc brakes aren't, um, they're more mechanical disc brakes, they're not hydraulic disc brakes. These are excellent brakes, sort of top of the line type brakes for a vehicle like this. Since we talked about quality brakes, let's talk about a few other attention to detail type things that affect quality. You can see all the cable routing here. Some people are wondering why this is so thick. Well, by routing all the cables together, you don't have any squeaks or rattles when you're driving. They do a really good job of just cable routing things into the frame here, comes out of the back and really well routed to a single, uh, 
strand again out the back. You've got quality LED lights, which we'll try to show you here. We'll have to show you a better view right here of those lights turning on and off there. Um, good LED lights that give you proper energy efficiency, also good spread and everything else. So quality is a big thing throughout. These fenders here are optional. They are steel fenders, so that's good quality fender. And uh, they do have a uh, nice painted body color to match. Uh, so just really uh, good quality. Now the important thing also in quality is let's talk about fit. When a lot of people think about fit of a bike, they think about seat height adjustment, but this one has a really unique system that makes the entire bike fit you almost whatever size you are. There's a little thumb lever in here, which allows you to release this larger lever up here. And you can see everything just flops around. The benefit of this style of handlebar is you can adjust it wherever you need to adjust it and you can sort of center it up there. You can bring it forward or back. I'm a little taller, so I would bring it more forward. If you want a little closer to you, you can bring it like that. So whatever you want to do, we'll leave it there and you can move this where you need it. You clamp this down, push that little tab in there and the entire thing is locked. Not only is that good for adjusting to different riders, it allows you to adjust your bike on the fly to be more comfortable just if you want to change the way you sit in that bike for the afternoon. It's a super smart system. It's super secure. There's no issues once it's all locked in place, but everything moves at the push of a liver, it's a great idea to make you comfortable. The other thing that matters for comfort, of course, is the seat. Now you have a nice wide seat, nice cushy and cushy area here, and of course you can upgrade seats. Pedigo's got lots of accessories. This here is a suspension seat post, giving you the cushion that you need while driving. Now you'll notice this one does not have a suspension fork. In my opinion, this style, this body style bike, does not need a suspension fork. Most of the weight is here. You've got your battery, your motor, a lot of your gearing, it's all in the back. The front end's quite light, which means it will bounce over bumps uh, appropriately, and the the geometry of the bike when you sit on the bike allows that front end to kind of move gently and you've got big tires. Now you can get a version of this with a suspension or with the front suspension if you want it, uh, but it's really up to you. Here's where all your comfort is for riding. You're not really facing a real punishing ride on your wrist because your weight is not on your wrist, your weight is on the seat. And that means that suspending this is far more important than suspending this and adding some weight to a suspension fork. Now let's talk practicality. One of the most important things with an e-bike is practicality. You're gonna use this to replace your vehicle at times, but also just because you can go on longer rides, you're going to wanna to take stuff with you. So one of the things that most modern bikes don't have that we used to see in like the 80s is this little elastic clip here, which, uh, or elastic, I say spring-loaded clip here, which can hold things on. Then of course you've got the frame, the battery of course underneath here, the frame comes down here and you can tie bags down to there. Let me just quickly show you with the Pedego accessories that I have right now, how practical this is for simplicity. You can strap these on here. You can use the bottom right here to strap onto these little uh, tabs right there so that these don't swing out, they'll stay tight. But if you just wanted to get this on really quickly and uh, take it on or off really quickly, you could pull that up, you can lock it in, you could do the bottom tab if you wanted, and you are latched in ready to go instead of having to strap everything. And then you can take these by the handles, pull them up and you are good to go. So practicality is massive when it comes to e-bikes and Pedego does it probably better than anybody or at least as well as anybody. And you've also got quality accessories like those bags that I just showed you. One other practical thing I wanna show you that is a little bit hard to show on camera is the kickstand. This seems silly, but it's really important. Pedego understands how you're using this bike, so they've got a big, thick kickstand with a big rubber base. It also, instead of coming down like most bikes, comes way out. A lot of bike shops, the kickstand is an accessory. This comes with the bike. It's part of the whole process. And because it's sort of wide out, it gives you a bigger triangle of space, which keeps the bike upright on soft ground, on uneven ground, and even on sandy ground, you've got that big base there. It's one of those really important things as you're grabbing your water bottle off the racks to have a nice, big, wide kickstand, and it works really well. It's just the little things that get overlooked that show you how Pedego pays attention to detail. So I'm gonna wrap up this video with a torture test here. There's a hill over on the property here that's paved, but it's very steep. Now, first of all, hills do not look steep on camera, no matter how you film them. It's a very steep hill. And a lot of people ask, is this enough power to get me up those hills? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna torture test this right now. We're gonna to go to the bottom of the hill. We're gonna use only the throttle, no pedaling. I might use a pedal just to get balanced for a second, but only the throttle to go up a hill to see if this has enough power to push my around 175, a little bit north of there, 175-ish pound weight up that hill. So is an e-bike right for you? 
you gotta just try it out. Swing down to Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals, Jim Gilbert's Power Sports. You can try a huge variety of these uh, e-bikes. Pedego is a leading brand, and if you're interested in these bikes, like I said, subscribe to the channel. We're gonna have a whole lot more e-bikes, and especially the full lineup. So there's so many different varieties of bicycles, because when you have pedal assist, you can do different things. So huge variety in the lineup. If you're interested in Pedego bikes, sign to this channel. Let's go do that torture test right now. All right, torture test. One of the things I forgot to mention was the boomerang has this step through design and that's really just easy to get in and out of, to step over. You don't have to swing your leg over the backside. We'll put that kickstand up. So I am in pedal assist number six. That is the one where it's not gonna give me a whole lot of assistance unless I use the throttle. And I mean the eighth gear, that means I can't pedal up this hill under my own strength. I have to rely fully on the electric power. So here we go, get it going a little bit. My feet are off, pure electric power, heading up the hill. And now when we come down the hill, whoa, we're making some good speed here. Come down the hill, I'm gonna use only my pinkies to brake, showing you that with that hydraulic brakes, you can just easily brake. You don't need a lot of strength to slow down, come to a complete stop. So again, there's that step through design, easy to get on and off of. We'll turn the headlights on here. You probably won't see a whole lot of brightness there. Again, I'm filming a wide angle camera right now. Uh, headlights work great. This bike is amazing. Come check one out for yourself.